Stand by, please. The following program comes to you from Studio One at CBS. It is like a dozen other towns in Mexico, is it not, Dr. The Hill? Only at sunset in La Ruel, and from the terrace here on the hill, like our Guanahuac, really, is no other town. Eighteen churches? Yes, and 57 cantinas for the drinking of tequila and playing of dominoes. You know the whole thing happened exactly a year ago today in one of those cantinas? You mean your friend, the consul? And Ivan. This day it would be, for him, the day of the dead. The scene you have just heard comes from the opening chapter of a new book which has been handsomely acclaimed by critics and reviewers as one of the most remarkable achievements in modern fiction, the best novel of the season, and a work of genius. A further triumph in addition to these golden words is the fact that the book was published only a few weeks ago and is already on the lists of bestsellers. The story concerns a man and the dark tyranny of alcohol, a subject which is getting and deserves considerable attention these days. But it has also been observed as a positive statement of basic human values and human hope. Malcolm Lowry wrote it, and it's called Under the Volcano. We're going to do a radio version of it for you in just a moment. This is Studio One, a new full-hour dramatic series on CBS. And this is our first broadcast, and this is Fletcher Markle. Greetings. Columbia Broadcasting System introduces Studio One, a new series of hour-length versions for listening of celebrated novels, stories, and plays. Tonight, as the initial program of the series, we submit Fletcher Markle's production of Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry. The original music is composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. The principals at the microphone, Everett Sloan and Hedley Rainey. Herewith, from Studio One... At CBS. Under the Volcano. Uh, But this is the old Mexico I love. With the sun coming down, when all the men began to uh, sing and all the dogs to shark. <laughs> Back, Dr. Vigil. Yes, yes, La uh, It's been a long year since November 1938. It was a year ago, a different age. But we went to the ball at the Bay of East Hotel the night before, just as we went this year, last night. Yes, yes. But he was not last night here, your friend, the consul, with the, with the horrible drunkenness, the sickness of himself. Poor Jeff. Poor your friend, yes. He spent his money on earth. Such, such continuous tragedies. And Yvonne came back. That's what I shall never understand. She came back to the man. There was nothing other for her but coming back. Come, mi amigo. Throw away your mind. Try not to remember your friend, the consul. It is very bad for you, La Ruel. <laughs> I threw away my mind long ago, Doctor. You know, Doctor, my memories of Jeffrey Furman are rather like old postcards. All of them are a little the same. I can understand that. Behind every image, my every remembered moment of him are the volcanoes out there. Behind every talk, every party or meeting we had, every trip or meal or letter, Popocatépetl and Ixtaxiwatl and the others. There is one letter in particular. I found it in the pages of a book of Elizabethan plays he loaned me. To me, it is the real beginning of what happened that dreadful day a year ago. It was written to his wife, Yvonne, at the end of a long night of drinking, 
and never mailed to her. Night. And once again, the grapple with death, the snatches of fearful sleep, the imaginary voices and noises outside my window. As if there were not enough real noises in these nights, the color of gray hair. Not the rending tumult of American cities, but the howling pariah dogs, the cocks that herald dawn all night, the drumming, the moaning of roosting fowl on telegraph wires and fences, the eternal sorrow that never sleeps of great Mexico. For myself, I like to take my sorrow into the shadow of old monasteries, my guilt into cloisters and under tapestries or into cantinas where legless beggars drink at dawn. So that when you left me, Yvonne, I went to Oaxaca. Oaxaca. There is no sadder word. Shall I tell you, Yvonne, of my terrible journey to the town through the desert, over the narrow gauge railway on a third-class carriage bench? Or of how when I went to my room in the hotel where we once were happy, the noise of the slaughtering below in the kitchen drove me out into the glare of the street? And later that night, there was a vulture sitting in the wash basin. I sometimes think of myself as a great explorer who has discovered some extraordinary land from which he could never return to give his knowledge to the world. But the name of this land is hell. It is not Mexico, of course, but in the heart. And today... I was in Kwanauak as usual when I received from my lawyer news of our divorce. I received other news, too. England is breaking off diplomatic relations with Mexico, and all her consuls are being called home. These are kindly and good men, for the most part, whose name I suppose I diminish. I shall not go home with them. I shall resign and remain here working on my book since December 1937 when you went and now in the spring of 1938 I have been deliberately struggling against my love for you I dared not submit to it but if I'm to survive I need your help alas for the night of sorry aspect for oh Yvonne I'm so haunted continuously by the thought of your warmth and merriment of your simplicity and comradeship the sweet beginnings of our marriage do you remember the Strauss song we used to sing? Once a year the dead live for one day. Oh, come to me again as once in May. Sometimes when I hear the little red mail plane fly in from Acapulco at seven in the morning over the strange hills, as I reach out babbling for the drink I've had the marvelous foresight to put nearby the night before, I think that you will be on that plane and will have come to save me. Then the morning passes, and you have not come. But, oh, I pray for this now that you will come. But please, oh, please, Yvonne, hear me. My defenses are down. At the moment, they're down. And there is the plane. I hear it in the distance. Come back, come back. I'll stop drinking anything. I'm dying without you. For the Lord's sweet sake, Yvonne, come back to me. Hear me, it's a cry. Come back to me, Yvonne, if only for a day. And Yvonne came back. I shall never understand that, Katavi here. She came back to the man many months after that letter was written and never sent on the morning following the great ball at the Bay of Easter Hotel. Yvonne came back to Kwanauak and was directed to the council in the long bar of the Bay of Easter early in the morning of the Day of the Dead. A corpse will be transported by express. Si, senor. But why, Fernando? Why should a corpse be transported by express, do you suppose? Uh-huh. On the other hand, Fernando, why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't a corpse be transported by express? Absolutely necessary. Since the laws in Bunch, Alabama, fast. 
senor. It says so here in the railway timetable. Senor. Right here in the timetable. Senor Consul. Huh? What was the trouble, Fernando? Senor, the lady, the senora waiting behind you. Huh? Hello, Jeff. Good. Keep off. Surprise party. I've come back. My plane got in an hour ago. From Acapulco. Ac- Acapulco? I came by boat, Jeff, from San Pedro. Panama Pacific to Pennsylvania. Jeff. Did you fly from Acapulco in, in the little red mail plane? Yes. It was as wonderful as last time. Don't you love these early mornings? Have us our friend at the end of the bar suggest a cigarette. Yes. Have a drink? Well, you have one and I'll cheer. You're up early. Late. I've been to the ball. It's still going on. Yes, I know. I saw. I was just joking. Jeffrey, what have you done? I wrote you and wrote you. I wrote till my heart broke. What have you done with your life? I thought, of course, you'd return to England when you didn't answer. Oh, Jeff, have you resigned from the service? I ran into Louis in Santa Barbara. He said you were still here. Well, actually, I've only been away once. To Oaxaca. Remember Oaxaca? Oaxaca? Oaxaca. It's like a heartbreaking, isn't it? Jeffrey, what's the matter? It's... Really, the shakes that make this kind of life insupportable, but they'll stop. I, I was only drinking enough so they would just the necessary therapeutic drink. I, I'm really doing very well. I, I'm much better than I was six months ago, very much better than I was, say, in Oaxaca. Jeff, please, let's go. It's nearly eight o'clock. Go where? Home. Uh, to, to the house. We can walk. Walk? Yes. I mean, if you... Oh, yes, of course. Glad to get some circulation going in the old legs. Let's go to the house. The town hasn't changed much, has it, Jeff? No, not really. Yet the street looks different somehow. <laughs> old Calle Nicaragua is still here. Yes, and he's still here, too. He hasn't budged an inch. Who, who, who hasn't? Jacques Laruelle, of course. The maker of great films. Retired maker, one should say. <laughs> what a country Mexico is for people who retire from uncompleted careers. He stayed on all this time? Yes, that's right. Your old friend, Jacques Laruelle. Oh, yes, we've had terrific times together. Have you? And there's... Something else, perhaps, I ought to tell you. Yes? What is it? About Hugh, that wandering half-brother of mine. You've heard from Hugh? How is he? He's staying with me. He's staying with you? Yes, that's right. Your old friend, Hugh Furman. It seems he's been in America this time on a cattle ranch. Texas. Yes, it seems everyone comes flying to see me these days. But, 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 Hugh, I don't understand. Well, he'd lost his clothes en route. Turned up looking like Hoot S. Hart. I even had to lend him a jacket. But he hadn't lost his passport, which was unusual, perhaps because he's still somehow with the London Globe. Did he know about our divorce? No. Did you tell him? Well, he knows that we're separated, of course. But I avoided telling him the divorce had gone through. Or at least I, I hadn't got around to telling him when he left. Oh, then he's not staying with you any longer. Oh, yes, he is. He's been trying to straighten me out. <laughs> Can't you see it? And he almost literally succeeded right off with some malevolent strychnine compound he produced. But actually, he'd got wind of a story about some fascist business here. Mexico's full of German agents right now. Anyhow, Hugh heard about these monkeys while vacationing on the ranch and came after the story. Didn't I tell you that? No. Well, which is why he's gone off to Mexico City. Well, we may have a little time together, mainly. Oh, but he's throwing up the job might be back by now. At any rate, he'll be back sometime today, I think. He says he wants action. Poor old chap, he's wearing a very popular front these days. And how will he feel when he sees you again? About my condition? I'd be grateful if you say nothing to him, for his sake. 
Oh. Not that I've been drinking much, of course, in his absence, and not that I'm at, not absolutely cold stone sober now, as you can readily see. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, well, here's the slope. Come along, darling. We're almost home. Home. Yes. You know, there simply isn't another view in Mexico like this one from the porch here. The volcano scowling out there beyond the ravine. Look at old Popo. Mm. It's even more magnificent than I remembered. But, Jeff, the place is a wreck. Yes, I know. In yours. Oh, here's Concepta. Ivan Concepta, Concepta Senora Fermin. Mucho gusto, Senora. Hello, Concepta. Uh, Concepta, el otro senor. No, Senor. Oh. Well... Hugh hasn't returned yet. I dare say you want your old room, Yvonne. Por qué no? Agua caliente, senor. Ah, well, there's hot water for you, which is a miracle. I think Concepta wants to know what to do with the tray, Jeff. It looks heavy. Oh, uh, the tray, yes. I I'll take it. Gracias, Concepta. That will be all. Si, sí, senor. Concepta knows my habits, you see. I'll just put it down on the table. Quite a collection, Jeff. And ice and soda. Uh, yes, she's most efficient, our conceptor. The sinister-looking bottle is the strychnine Hugh brought. Will you have a whiskey and soda? The ice seems to be for your benefit anyway. No, not for me, thank you, Jeff. Uh, nothing? Go ahead. What have you got to lose? Well, let me have some breakfast first. I, uh, I'll have the strychnine, I think. I don't feel you believe in the strychnine somehow, Yvonne. Neither do you believe in the strychnine. You want a drink. Yvonne is back. You need a drink. Yvonne is back. It is the most important situation in your life. Except one. Except for the far more important situation it in turn creates of your having to have 500 drinks to deal with it. You don't believe in the strychnine, but take it. Take a drink. Strychnine. Drink. What was that you said? I said three times, for Pete's sake, have a decent drink. Huh. You don't have to drink that stuff to impress me. I'll just... Sit here in the rocker and cheer. No. No, I'll... Uh, I'll stick to the old medicine, thanks. Whatever you say. Have you... really come back, or... have you just come to see me? Here I am, aren't I? Strange. Yet it's awfully courageous of you. What if... I'm in a frightful, jolly mess, you know. But you look amazingly well. You've no idea how well you look. And you, beautiful, brown. You look as though you had plenty of sun. Do you know I don't like the sun? Oh, yes, you do, really? You ought to be here before very long if he comes back by the first bus from Mexico City. What time is the first bus? Half past ten, eleven. It's only 8.30 now. Yes. I, I think I'll have a bath, Jeff. Oh, fine, fine. There's hot water, you know. Perhaps I ought to get a little sleep. Yes, yes, of course. I, uh, I, I'll i wake you, if you like, with a, with a breakfast tray. That'd be wonderful, Jeff. Right, then. No, don't get up. I'm all right. I know the way. Now, now, she's gone. Have a drink. No, yes, that's what she said. Have a decent drink. No, yes, no, yes. sleep at all? No, I couldn't sleep, I found. I've been reading. Are you comfortable? Fine, thanks. Put your knees down. Here's your tray. How lovely. Breakfast by Concepta. Well, aren't you going to eat anything yourself? You must be starved, Jeff. I... I partook. And, uh, I brought myself some more strychnine. Oh. Oh, by the by, I must apologize for still being in this fancy outfit. It's dusty, too. Bad show. I might have put on a blazer, at least, for your benefit. Oh, yes, very proper now that I've resigned from His Britannic Majesty's consular service. So you really have resigned? Oh, absolutely. I'm thinking of becoming a Mexican subject and going to live with the Indians like William Blackstone. Sound fellow, William Blackstone. Jeff, why don't we go away? Now? 
But we can't very well go away now, can we? What with you and you and me and one thing or another, don't you think? It's a little unfeasible, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm sure you'd understand. But that's not quite the point. Jeffrey, this house has somehow become evil. I mean, it's rather a dirty trick. Is it? What's the use of escaping from ourselves? All right, Jeffrey. Suppose we forget it till you're feeling better. We can... We can cope with it in a day or two when you're sober. But really, Yvonne, I... Surely you know by this time I can't get drunk, however much I drink. Why, do you think I like swilling down this awful stuff you brought? I don't know. Do you like it? I... Tomorrow, perhaps, I'll slow down. Yes, I will. I'll, I'll straighten out. Then, perhaps, when my nerves are back to normal again, I'll go off it completely. And then, who knows, I might get down to work again and finish my book. Yes. Who knows? I... I can see the reviews now. Mr. Jeffrey Furman's sensational new data on Atlantis. The chapters on the alchemists are particularly fine. Jeff, darling. <laughs> oh, oh, Jeffrey, sweet, sweet. There, there. I'm sorry. Isn't it any good, I'm afraid? Get some sleep, Jeff. I'm going to get up now. You, you, you sleep. Sleep? You need sleep, darling. Yes, yes, I... I'll go to my room. If you want anything... I'd, I'll go to my room. I, I'm sorry. Sorry. Later. Have you forgotten the letters, Jeffrey Furman? The letters she wrote till her heart broke? Go back to her now. Have a quick drink and go back. You never answered the letters. You did. You didn't. You did. You didn't. You did. Then where is your reply? You didn't even read them. Where are they now? Lost. Left somewhere. Have a drink and go back. Sleep, drink, sleep, drink. Senora. Senora. He come. Senor Hugh. Yvonne. You, hello. Oh, absolutely something or other. Oh, it's nice to see you again. When did you get here? Just a little while ago. I hear you've been in Texas. Well, I must say, you look the part. Ten-gallon steps and high-heeled boots and <laughs> Jeff's old jacket. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, well, they impounded my clothes at the border. I meant to buy some new ones in Mexico City and never got around to it somehow. You look awfully well, Yvonne. And you. Where's our ruddy monarch? Jeffrey, he's asleep. Isn't it rather indefatigably English of Jeff to be asleep? He was at the Red Cross ball last night. He's pretty tired, poor dear. Isn't the garden a wreck? It used to be so beautiful. It was like paradise. Still looks beautiful to me, considering Jeffrey hasn't had a gardener for so long. But if it offends you, why don't we get out of it? Unless you're too tired to walk. Not a bit. What are we waiting for? Or better, we can hire horses at the experimental farm and go for a ride. So that you can show off your clothes, I suppose. Of course. Let's go, shall we? <laughs> I'm glad we're over the bridge. Actually, you're glad we're past the ravine. Isn't that it? Yes, I suppose it is, really. That ravine surrounds this town like a curse. Oh, yes, the abyss. Jeff and his deadly ditch. What's that? Target practice. The vigilantes, I think. Fascist monkeys, Jeff calls them. Apparently, they've attached themselves to the military police here and there. But this is 1938, not the days of Pancho Villa. Oh, no relation. According to Jeff, this is the foreign power at work. Capital G for Germany. You? What are you doing here in Mexico? On a story of sorts. Huh? Matter of fact, I just filed my last cable to the Globe. Your last? Yes, I got a copy of it right here in my pocket. Here. You must be proud of it. Thanks. I am. Daily Globe, London. Following yesterday's head coming anti-Semitic campaign, Mex Express... <laughs> <laughs> well, this is ridiculous, Hugh. I can't, I can't read this cable language. Here, you just tell me what it means. Well, it's very simple, really. It's, it's just about a petition to the government from the Mexican workers. They say that the German legation is behind an anti-Semitic campaign in the textile business here. It's big stuff. I tracked down some good dope on it. Obviously. But should you sign your name to that sort of thing, Hugh? Why not sign it? Oh, uh, repercussions from the Hitler boys, you mean? Well, Smith, Jones, Furman, what's it matter? They don't like me at the legation anyway. They or their sharpshooting vigilantes. You better take care of my pet. Tush. 
Hugh, tell me about Texas. What were you doing there? Studying, Okis. Then I heard about the Hitler crowd here and decided to come along and snoop. I like you. Well, before Texas. China and Spain. Well, then whatever did Jeffrey mean by saying you wanted action? Oh, it's really rather tedious, the journalistic routine. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see for a while. I'm quitting the globe. To see you? Whatever for? Uh, never mind about that now. Isn't this a day? Mm. Like a good Joe Venuti record. Mid-morning really is the best time in Mexico, isn't it? Oh, not according to her natives, apparently. Look at our dusty Indian friend under the tree there with the horses tethered. <laughs> quite emphatically asleep. Portrait of peace. I can't quite make out the brand on the horse. It's like a number seven. I've become terribly interested in brands since Texas, you know. Have you? Yvonne, do you mind my asking you straight out whether you're divorced from Jeff or not? I'd like to know precisely what the situation is. So would I. And you don't know whether you divorced him or not? Oh, I divorced him. But you don't know whether you're going back to him or not? Yes. No. Yes, I've, I've gone back to him, all right. What do you think about Jeffrey, Hugh? Tell me the truth. About his drinking, you mean? Do you think there's anything I can do? I don't know. Perhaps now you've come back like this, he'll stop. It isn't just drinking somehow. But why does he do it? Who knows? Perhaps because he's aware of being, in his own eyes, a failure. Oh, I don't know. Maybe not that. If we knew we could do something. Just sobering him up for a day or two is not going to help. Imagine, if our civilization were to sober up for a couple of days, it'd die of remorse on the third. That's very helpful. Thank you. No, seriously. Why don't both of you get out, though? Out of Mexico. Well, you, I had an idea coming down on the boat. Whoa. I don't know whether it... But I've always dreamed of having a farm somewhere, you know? A real farm with cows and pigs and chickens. (laughs) Oh, Jeff among the alfalfa in overalls and a straw hat, soberly hoeing. All right, maybe it is ridiculous. But at least it's better than sitting here doing nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. I was being more than unusually stupid. You, I'm afraid of today. What can we do with him? There's a bull throwing at Tomalin this afternoon. He spoke of wanting to see it the other day. We could organize a gay little trip, if you like, ride to Tomalin on the bus. Let's do that, Hugh. It might keep him amused. Might. What else can we do? We'll do everything we can. Come on, let's get back to him. Has. <laughs> Really an extraordinarily nice day for a trip. Also, it's absolutely astonishing. What is, Jeff? Well, here we are, the three of us, trudging up old Collier, Nicaragua, to the bus station on our way to a bull throwing, <laughs> just as if we'd all been together for weeks and weeks and were desperately bored with each other. Gay conversation becomes rather difficult, Jeff. Climbing this slope in a one o'clock sun. I couldn't agree with you more, Hugh. Oh, nonsense. You're a pair of weaklings. <laughs> Oh, uh, going back to our conversation at the house, Hugh, we have a peculiar situation with the police here in Kwanahuac. What's the story? Well, of course, they're not police in the strict sense. As a matter of fact, the regular police here... I know. They're on strike. Yes, naturally. In the meantime, a pack of fascistic monkeys are throwing their weight about a bit. They're tied up with the military police. They've got chiefs of everything. Gardens, rostrums, orchards. For future reference, remember... The Sinarchistas, Vigilantes, or whatever they're called, if you're interested. I'm not personally, but you... Ivan! Ivan! Look now, it's La Ruel. Chuck! Why, goodness me, I, I thought... And Jeffrey. Uh, hello there. How are you, Jacques? Uh, very well, thank you. You, this is Jacques La Ruel. You've probably heard me speak of him at one time or another. Jacques, my young brother, Hugh. Oh, I'm so you? glad to meet you. Now, how goes it, Jacques? You look as though you needed to pick me up rather badly. Well, why do we not drop into my house here? That would be good fun, don't you think, uh, Jeffrey? Uh, you? Uh, come along, Yvonne. Let me escort you. But, Jacques, we're going to a bull throwing at Tomalin. Oh, your bus won't leave until 2.30. You have over an hour. Come along, all of you. I insist. No, no, no. Not a well, is it? Yes. He used to be a film director. Oh, You know, I really think you two ought to get together. You have something in common, I assure you. What would that be? Isn't it obvious, Hugh? Yvonne. You 
are hearing a version for listening of Malcolm Lowry's Under the Volcano, the initial broadcast in Columbia's new full-hour dramatic series entitled Studio One. The performance will resume after a pause for local station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continuing the initial broadcast of Studio One, Columbia's new hour-length dramatic series, Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry. Please, Jeffrey. Please, please believe me. I didn't want to come here to Jacques' house. I didn't want to get drawn into this at all. Let, let's make some excuse and get away as quickly as possible. I don't mind how many drinks you have later. I wasn't aware I'd said anything about drinks now or after. It's you that's put the thought in my head. Or Jacques, who's downstairs with Hugh, crushing ice. Haven't you got any tenderness or love left for me at all? Don't you think of anything except how many drinks you're going to have? Yes, I do. I'm back, Jeff. Can't you see it? We're here together again. It's us. Can't you see that? Yes, I can see. Those who want them or need them. You shouldn't be going to all this trouble, Jack. We've been discussing films. Didn't you make any in Hollywood, Jack? Yes, but I refuse to see them. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey, don't you think you ought to see something of the fiesta since it's his last day? Especially if there's native dancing. I wouldn't know. Won't he get native dancing and things in tourmaline? Would you like to, Hugh? Anything you say. Are you worried about the bus? I'm sure Jacques will forgive us if we rush off. Of course, but there are fresh drinks it's here. It's Hugh's last day, you see. Well, let me see you downstairs safely, then. Huh? It's too early for the fete to be very much. But you ought to see Rivera's murals, you, if you haven't already. Aren't you coming, Jeffrey? Well, fiestas aren't my strong suit. You run along. I'll meet you at the terminal in time for the bus. I have to talk to Jacques here anyway. All right. You'll be there in time, won't you, darling? I'll be there. I don't want to speak to you at all, really, Jacques. For that matter, I wouldn't mind if this was the last time I ever saw you. Did you hear me? Have you gone mad? Am I to understand that your wife has come back to you, something I've seen you praying and howling for, and yet you treat her like this and still continue to care only where your next drink's coming from? Marvelous day, isn't it? You can see all the way over the jungle at Parian. But I think we shall have thunder. Jeffrey, has she really come back? Looks like it, doesn't it? But I mean, really come back. She hasn't really come down on a visit or to see you out of curiosity or on, on a basis that you'll be friends and so on, if you don't mind me asking. As a matter of fact, I rather do. Get this straight, Jeffrey. I'm thinking of Ivan, not you. Get it a little straighter still. You're thinking of yourself. Why aren't you back home trying to rest and sober up? Ivan looks tired out. Perhaps you imagine that if you could insinuate yourself into our company, she would miraculously cease to be tired. But there's Hugh, you know. I haven't explained just how Hugh fits into the picture, have I? Oh, He's Jeffrey. part of Ivan's past, too, just as you are. Yes. But on second thoughts, I don't think I'll trouble explaining. And have another tequila... Join me. It's your supply. No, thank you. You really prefer that stuff? Tequila? <laughs> it's fire down the spine. Like lightning striking a tree and the tree blossoms. As a beverage, it rivals gasoline. If I ever start to drink that stuff, Jeffrey, you'll know I'm done for. Yes, it's mezcal with me. If I ever start to drink mezcal again, I'm afraid... Yes, that would be the end. Would it? Well, Laruel, I do believe you're trembling... I thought you were never afraid. I'm afraid of you, Jeff. For everyone's sake, please go home to bed or, or stay here. I'll find the others and tell them you're not going. But I am going. What about the damage you've done to her life? After all your howling, if you've got her back, if you've got this chance... You are interfering, Jacques. You're interfering with my great battle. My battle against death. Do you realize that while you're battling against death or whatever you imagine you're doing while you're enjoying all this, do you realize what extraordinary allowances are being made for you by the world which has to cope with you? Yes, allowances that are even be made by me now. You deny the greatness of my battle? Even if I win? 
And I shall certainly win if I want to. No, 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 you lose, lose, lose. You are a losing man. Oh, you fool. Stupid fool. Do you remember what you stretched on the plaster of my house? No se puede vivir sin amar. It's not possible to live without love. It's still there, you know. Like a sign. I don't care for your translation. Mexico is full of signs, Rock. There's the one you sometimes see in the gardens and parks. Le gusta este jardín? Que es suyo? Evite que sus hijos lo destruyan. You like this garden? Why is it yours? We evict those who destroy. And I don't like your translation. Why not this? Do you like this garden which is yours? Then prevent your children from destroying it. I prefer mine. Oh, Jacques, I must go. They'll be waiting for me at the bus. Thank you for the tequila. Goodbye, Jacques. Goodbye, Jeffrey. <laughs> You made it, darling. Just in time, in the nick. Well, of course. Why not? Oh, my God. Look back, you. You, that cafe back there, El Amor de los Amores. What about it? That's one of your fascist joints. You don't say. Yes, and our fellow passenger sitting right over there opposite you is the proprietor's brother. He's a pelado. Well, what might that mean? Well, it all depends. Literally, it means a peeled one. In practice, a thief or exploiter of others even lowlier than himself. Interesting. Say, how are you getting on, Yvonne? Oh, this is such fun, Hugh. I'm loving it. It's like driving over the moon. Oh, I say, strange. This isn't a regular stop. What is it? What, what, what's wrong? Seems to be a man lying in the road. Come on, let's get out and see. By all means. Excuse me. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. It's the body. The man's wounded. Look, don't, don't mind me. It's just I can't stand the sight of blood. You better stay in the bus, Yvonne. Yeah. Oh. Well, there's not much blood. The wound must be under his hat. Yes, I'd better shift it so we can have a look. Uh, no, no, no. They have prohibited that. No, don't, don't. What? Don't. You can't touch him. That's the law in these parts. Mm. Besides, I think our Senor Pelado is going to investigate. But the man may be dying. How do you suppose he got here? Well, on his horse, presumably. There's one grazing just over there. Horse? Wait, strike me. Yes, it is, I'm certain. Certain of what? Th that's the same horse Yvonne and I saw this morning. There's a sore on its hip bone and a number seven branded on his rump. We saw it this morning. You did? And this poor fellow must be the one who was riding it earlier. But what about the saddlebags? They're gone. Well, I don't suppose if the horse kicked the man to death, it would have sufficient intelligence to kick its saddlebags off, too, and hide them somewhere, do you? <laughs> Listen. Listen, we've got to get a doctor, an ambulance or something. Nobody seems to care about it at all. We just can't wink at this sort of thing. It's all right, I tell you. Here comes a posse of those fascist vigilante boys. They'll look after him. But, Jeffrey... Come along, come along, or we'll get left behind. We don't want to miss the bull throwing. I must say, I find this a rather tame exhibition. But now you don't spoil it. See the old unhappy bull in the plaza beautiful. <laughs> Will you pass me that flask, Yvonne, darling? But none of them knows what he's doing so far. <laughs> Strange about that bull. He's so elusive. Much too elusive for me. Excuse me, my dears. Here, Jeff, hold my jacket. Your jacket, I mean. Guadalajara! You, you, what are you doing? My jacket, so it is. Yes, how? Jeff, he's going into the ring. He's going to ride that bull. Oh, the perfect fool. A curse on that stupid ass. Look, he is. He's riding it, Jeff. Texas or not, he's a fool, a fool. But look, it's all right, Jeff. You know what he's doing, as you can easily see. Idiot. He'll be all right, whatever he learned it. Texas, the numbskull. <laughs> Give me that bottle. Oh, you, you. Exhibitionist. I don't think he means to show off. But the risk, the stupid, senseless risk. Yes, he's doing wonderfully, simply wonderfully. Oh, darling. Jeffrey, darling, look at me. Listen to me. There isn't anything to keep us here any longer. Jeffrey? No, no. Jeffrey, darling, don't tremble. What are you afraid of? Why don't we go away now? Oh, I'm not. 
for life's sweet sake, let's get away a thousand, a million miles away, Yvonne, anywhere, so long as it's away, just away, away from all this, I beg you from this. Let's start again. Really, Jeffrey. Really and cleanly somewhere. It could be like a rebirth. Yes, yes, it could. Yvonne. Yes. I love you. Yvonne. Oh, I love you too. Oh, Jeffrey, we could be happy. We could. Yes, we could. Look, Hugh. Yes, Hugh. Something's happened to him. I can't see, but I think it's just the bulls got tired and sat down. Oh, yes, yes. That's it. Well, he's, he's all right. He's coming back up. He's lost his mighty hat. But they're throwing it back to him. You. Hugh. Hugh. Hello. <laughs> Hugh, you madman. Come on. Here, take the jacket. Thanks. Too hot for me, Jeff. Better wear it yourself. Uh, come oh. along, Yvonne. Forward to the Salon Failure, where mine host Cervantes awaits us. Shellfish. Live shellfish. Now you see what sort of creatures we are, Hugh. Eating things alive, that's what we do. How can you have much respect for mankind or any belief in the social struggle? Cervantes, mezcal, please. Otro mezcal. Jeffrey, please, not another. You've had three. Four. Let's get back to our conversation. I like it better than drinking. Ah, you people with ideas. All this, for instance, about Hugh going to fight for Spain and poor little defenseless China. Can't you see that the fate of nations is self-determined in the long run? They all seem to get what they deserve. Well, not exactly original. Not long ago, it was poor little defenseless Ethiopia. Before that, poor little defenseless Flanders. To say nothing, of course, of poor little defenseless Belgian Congo. Think now, what has all the heroic defense put up by poor little defenseless people got to do with the survival of the human spirit? Jeff, don't go on like this, please. I should like to know what it is you imagine you're talking about. Why can't people mind their own business? Or say what they mean. There's calamity at the end of interference. There must be calamity. Otherwise, the people who did the interfering would have to come back and, and cope with their responsibilities for the change. Just let a real war come along and then see how bloodthirsty chaps like you are. Which would never do. But, as I implied, you don't mind your own business at home any better than in foreign countries. You say, Jeffrey, darling, why don't you stop drinking? It isn't too late. That sort of thing. Why isn't it too late? Did I say so? I thought it was all so splendidly and legally settled that it was too late. It's only that you insist it isn't. Jeffrey. For all you know, it's only the knowledge that it most certainly is too late that keeps me alive at all. Ah, you're all the same, all of you, Yvonne, Jacques, and you, Hugh, trying to interfere with other people's lives, interfering, interfering. And that's precisely what's bringing about disaster in the world. All because you haven't got the wisdom and the simplicity and the courage. Yes, the courage to take any of them. To Look take... here, Jeffrey. What have you ever done for humanity, you, with all your smart talk about capitalism, except talk and thrive on it till your soul stinks? Shut up, Jeff, for the love of Mike. For that matter, both your souls stink. I'd rather be William Blackstone and go live with the Indians. Cervantes, another mezcal. Jeffrey, please sit down. You're making such a scene. No, I'm not, Yvonne. I'm talking very calmly. As when I ask you, what have you ever done for anyone but yourself? Where, for instance, are the children I might have wanted? You may suppose that I might have wanted them. Mind you, you don't pretend to love humanity, not a bit of it. You don't even need an illusion. Don't be such a swine. Stay where you are. Of course I see the romantic predicament you two are in. But even if Hugh makes the most of it again, it won't be long before he discovers there are others. Oh, yes, Jacques and a hundred other ninny hammers. Ah. Oh, Jeffrey, don't! What an uncommon good time you two must have had under cover of saving me. Poor, defenseless little me. But you see, it's perfectly logical what it comes down to. I've got my own piddling little fight for freedom on my hands. Oh, do shut up, Jeffrey. Shut up! True, true. I've been tempted to talk peace. I've been beguiled by your offers of a sober and non-alcoholic paradise. At least I suppose that's what you've been working around towards all day. But now I've made up my melodramatic little mind. What's left of it? Just enough to make up. And far from wanting your paradise, thank you very much. On the contrary, I choose hell. I choose it because I like it. I love hell. I can't wait to get back there. In fact, I'm running. I'm almost there already. Jeffrey, where are you? Jeffrey, come back. No, let him go. 
condition he's in. It's better. Well, he's not in that place. What's our next move? Do we give up or what? You know perfectly well I won't just run away and abandon him, Hugh. Well... I know where I am now. Path on our right leads to Parion by a shortcut through the jungle. Uh, what, what's the time? Quarter past six. This path? Uh, yes. There are several cantinas along the way. No, he's not in there and they haven't seen him. What's next? It's half past six now. Hotel restaurant, El Popo. It's down the road a little. Four twelve Popo then. the barman and the assistant manager. He hasn't been in there tonight. No. Well, I'm becoming quite convinced now that he's in the Farolito in Parian. How far to the Farolito now? Huh? It's almost seven o'clock. It's about a mile and a half. We can cut nearly a mile off that if we take the forest path. In the dark? It's the last place, you. Right. On to the Farolito. Jungle is right. Frightful smell. How much further, Yvonne? We're nearly there, I think. There are a couple of turns in the path ahead and a big fallen log we have to climb over. What's that? More target practice? Likely. Mind you don't get off the path there, Hugh. It's sort of tricky. And uh, mind the fallen log here. Right. Just scraping my shoe. I got off the stones into the mud. There's a ladder up this side, but you have to jump down on the other. About five feet. Be careful, then. Where in heaven's name are you? Here I am. Over here. Down on the other side of the lawn. Right. It's so dark here. Oh, Hugh! Hugh! Help! Help! Hey, what's wrong? It's a horse, Hugh! It's coming at me! A horse! Mescal? Mescal, dear Stano, you forsaken beggar. Si, senor. Ah. What time is it? Six. No. Six, dear Stano. Si, si, mister. Six. You are drunk one day here, no? What? Twice a day in Farolito. Then you'll be going back to America now. I? No, why? These letters... Are they yours? Yes. No? The letters, Jeffrey Furman. Her letters. The letters she wrote till her heart broke. You did not know where they were. But all the time they were in Parian, here in the Faralito. Yes. Yes, they are my letters. Muchas gracias. There is nothing, senor. You, uh... You are Spanish, dear Starro? Yes, yes, Spanish. Those, uh... These letters you gave me, you see, they're, they're from my wife, my esposa. Yeah. We met in Spain, you understand? Mm. Your old homeland. Do you know Andalusia? Granada? The place we met, my wife and I. Granada? So you have been in Granada, mister? Yes, yes, in Granada. The letters, Jeffrey Furman. You will read the letters. You will try to read them. The letters that were lost... The letter she wrote till her heart broke. Do you remember tomorrow? It's our wedding anniversary. I've not had one word from you since I left. It's as if you were away at war and I were waiting, waiting for news of you. For the letter, the telegram. I send you all my love. My whole heart. And all my thoughts and prayers. Okay, Ola. What's the time? Sick. No. It is half past six by the clock. You mean half past six by the clock? Yes, senor. Half past six by the clock. 
air. I... I'd like some air. What for you touch that horse? What for are you here? Nothing. I saw the horse tethered outside, and so I walked out to have a look at it, amigo. Well, why did you look at that horse? Well, as a matter of fact, I thought I recognized it. And I was right. It has a number seven branded on its rump. You come with me inside, you. You're Americano, eh? You stay here, understand, senor? They say there is trouble about you no pay here in Faralito. You no pay for Mexican whiskey. You have no money, eh? Si, yes, much money. What for do you want to look at Mexican horse? For why? You run away with Mexican horse for to no pay Mexican money, eh? No, no, decidedly not. Of course I wasn't going to steal your horse. I was merely looking at it, admiring it. You talking inside there of Spain, yes? You know Spain? Yes, I know Spain. You a dirty Bolsheviki? You member of Brigade Internacional? A steer up trouble? No, absolutamente no. Absolutamente, eh? All right. Come on, my friend. We want to find out about you. How much money have you got? Fifty pesos. Fifty pesos, eh? Perhaps that's not enough money. What are for? English, Spanish, Americano, Russian? You come from the URSS, eh? What are you for? Eh? What is your name? Is? This is the chief of municipality. He want to know uh, your name. Yes. What is your name? Is? Blackstone. William Blackstone. Why uh, are you, eh? What are you for? English? No. Just William Blackstone. You are Jordan? No, just Blackstone. You are a uh, drunk, eh? He is the chief of gardens there. I am chief too. I am only chief of Rastro. And I... am perfectamente drunk. You sit here down, you wait. We telephone about what you are for. Certainly, certainly. I'll read. I have uh, some letters here. I am perhaps God's loneliest mortal, Jeffrey. I don't have the companionship in drink you find. My wretchedness is locked up within me. You used to cry to me to help you. The plea I send to you is far more desperate. Help me, Jeffrey. Save me from all that's enveloping, threatening, trembling over my head. If I only knew that you wanted me, you know that I'd be with you. For my life is irrevocably and forever bound to yours. And I'm frightened, Jeffrey. The emptiness of my body is the famished need of you. My tongue is dry in my mouth for the want of our speech. If you let anything happen to yourself, you'll be harming my flesh and mine. I'm in your hands now. Save us. No good for you here at Farolito, senor. Bad place. Very bad. These men no friend of Mexican people. They know police. The Diablos. Murderers. You come away with me. Thank you, no good friend. Time to pay for a uh, Mexican whiskey. We take all from your pockets now. You give, give me those letters. Turn around your jacket. What for is this paper? You see, you read. Huh? Daily Globe, London. Collect. 
Anti-Semitic campaign, Max Press pro-petition, Germans behind... What is this? Jews? Jew, Jordan. Power ends conscience. Unquote, stop vermin. Vermin? No, no, Blackstone. Your name is Vermin. He say they're Vermin. He say you are Jordan. I don't give a hoot what it says anywhere. My name's Blackstone and I'm not a journalist. True, I'm a writer, but only on economic matters. Where are your papers? Papers, huh? Well, now, perhaps, uh... What for you have no papers? Where's your passport at? What need for you to make these guys? You see this card from your pocket coat? You read it. What? Read! Federacion Anarchista Iberica, Senor Hugo Firmin, member. Oh, I don't understand. That's my brother. Blackstone is my name. I'm a writer, not an anarchist. Writer? You anti-Christ and Juden. What for you tell lies? He says here, too, your name is Fearman. What for you lie? You say your name is Black. No, he's Black. You say you are a writer. You are no other writer. You are the spider. Spy? And we shoot the, the spiders in Mexico. You no writer. You are Capone. You are a spider. You take your hands off me and give me back those letters, your pox boxes. You killed that Indian this afternoon. You tried to kill him and make it look like an accident. You're all in it. Then more of you came and took his horse, and it's over there by the fence now. Give me my papers back. Papers? You have no papers. Devils, give me back those letters. You stole that horse. You stole the saddlebags. North Americano, eh? English. What do you think you do around here? He's no good for your health. We have found it out on the telephone that you are a criminal. Criminal? Did you want to be a policeman? I make you a policeman. I make you a policeman in Mexico. You killed that man. You stole his horse. I blowed you wide open from your knees up. <coughs> Nonsense. I'm taking this horse, you fascist monkeys. I'll go now. No, you tried to steal the horse for to escape. No, I blowed you wide open from your knees up, you cabron. No, I, I wouldn't do that. That's a cold 17, isn't it? Very dangerous. Now, if you'll excuse me. Not go as the... <laughs> Away the horse to the jungle. It's no matter. Do not go, a spider. Oh. oh, this is a dingy way to die. The horse. He's run away to the jungle. Oh, you won. <laughs> No se puede vivir sin amar. You remember those words I told you he scratched in the plaster of my house, Dr. Vigil? It is not possible to live without love. La Ruel, tell me, was it the same horse that trampled Yvonne to die? That horse your friend, the consul, tried for to escape? The same. And, and the brother, Hugh? I do not know why he should have been the one to live. He was alone. So was Jeffrey. But the brother, with a will to living, your friend, the consul, only have a will to die. His will itself, it die. Your friend, he walked straight into his own doom. He know that too himself, that I can tell. They threw his body into the ravine, the abyss. Every time I see those little signs in the parks and gardens, I think of Jeffrey... Do you like this garden, which is yours? I know, I know. Do not let your sons destroy it. The sign says, You are well to think on that, La Ruel. Jeffrey used to translate the original Spanish a little differently. We evict those who destroy, he used to say. And we should so. He evicted himself, your friend, the consul. We must make us, ourselves... And our children, 
worthy to inherit the garden and the earth. Columbia Broadcasting System has brought you the first program in a new series of hour-length versions for listening of celebrated novels, stories, and plays. Tonight is our initial broadcast. You have heard Fletcher Markle's production of Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry. The adaptation was prepared by Mr. Markle and Gerald Knoxon, and the original musical score was composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. And now, for your interest, may a producer introduce the cast. Featured in tonight's performance is Jeffrey Furman, the consul... Everett Sloan. As Yvonne, his estranged wife. Anne Burke. As Hugh, his brother. Hitler Rennie. Joe DeSantis was Laura Well. And Juan o. Hernandez was Dr. V. Heel. Actively assisting also were Robert Dryden, Danny Ocko, Pequita Anderson, Don Alberto, Leo Badia, Ralph Camargo, and Ivor Francis. Next Tuesday night from Studio One at CBS, Marcel Pagnol's Topaz. A comedy, internationally remembered and as fresh and delightful today as when it first was produced nearly 20 years ago. Until next Tuesday, then, and the gaiety of Topaz, this is Fletcher Markle with a good night and thank you from all of us in Studio One. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>